We're here at a certified collision center in Southern California, and I'm going to be talking to you uh, this morning about using a squeeze type resistant spot welder or STRW. The first thing before we get on, start any operation, we need to gather all of our materials. So here I put together all of the uh, items necessary for our demonstration this morning on squeeze type resistant spot welding. The most important thing is uh, personal safety for our technicians. So we want to start off with first is a face shield, uh, safety glasses, and protective hand protection or some sort of gloves that will allow us protection. I am prepared to walk, work on uh, a car using a squeeze type resistant spot welder. Let's talk about a few of the items here that we're going to do, deal with today. Here we have a ProSpot i4, a typical spot welder that is seen in uh, shops across the country. Uh, we'll talk a little about it. We have our computer screen, uh, our inlet pressure on and off. This here is our C-gun. This here would be the balancer for the cable. First thing I want to talk about is on the setup, uh, let's look at what we have. This particular gun has what we've known as the X-tongs um, for uh, getting into smaller areas. Uh, when you have the X-tongs on there, the first thing you want to do is check your inlet pressure, and it should be approximately 80, to 80 pounds PSI. If we're using the standard C-arm, uh, your pressure should be between 65 and 70 pounds PSI. Part of the maintenance is that uh, we want to make sure that our tips are in uh, proper working order. These particular tips have been ground down using a grinder. Uh, that's a no-no. Uh, we want to make sure that when we get started that the tips are new. And a couple things here we talk about is the changing of the tips. A lot of your technicians will take a pair of vice grip pliers that have the serrations on the jaws and use that on the electrodes. What it does is it has a tendency to chew them up pretty good. So we're going to use what they call a V-jaw from Irwin Vice Grips. I'm going to use a special pair of pliers here to loosen these up and take them out. Um, we'll show you a close-up of them. These are worn out and I got some brand new ones. This is a handy tool from uh, ProSpot. Uh, this here grinds the tips for the uh, I-4 to the proper dimensions. Again, it's depending on what you want to do with it. So again, but you want to make sure that, uh, that your tips are always clean and dressed properly. And what you want to do is set them. And if you notice that they're out of alignment, so I'm going to Okay, so very important on tips. Misaligned tips will cause a lot of sparks and a very poor weld. It, what it creates is a lot of resistance in the weld. We're looking to uh, achieve a good quality weld. So always check before you start welding that your tips are in total alignment. They have to be totally like this. If they're off to the side or, or crooked, uh, you'll get a very poor weld. So the tips are replaced and we're ready to go. I want to talk to you about this particular arm that comes with the ProSpot. This particular unit is designed for the wheelhouse. A lot of guys use it all over the place. Now here's the problem with it. If you look real close, they have pressed this down so far that this weld on a car would be between 50 and 60 percent weaker than it's supposed to be. Uh, the actual contact tip is just on the edge here. And if we don't have it on that edge, we're going to be losing power. So the proper way is you would put this in. Every time you use it, there's a little set screw. You, ro you rotate around, and uh, that will keep a nice uh, round uh, surface here, and it'll give you longevity on it. We're going to take a couple pieces of metal here. And I don't know what the thickness is, so I can do one of two things. I can take a caliper. and I can measure it. 
This comes out to 0.7 millimeters, or this would be equivalent to 22 gauge. If you don't have a caliper, this is a handy little item from Miller. It is a metal thickness gauge. Works like so. You find the thickness of it, and it is 22 gauge. 22 gauge is 0 0.7, 0 0.8 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put a, a, a bead in here, we'll check it out. I'm gonna set the a machine here for mild steel, and then I'm gonna set its thickness, which is up here at 0.7 millimeters, and I'm gonna run a bead. So we created a bead. How do we know if it's good? So let me show you how we're gonna do a test on this. This is called a peel test. I'm going to take a pair of these V-jaw v pliers. Peel this back. Take the other pair. Peel it back. Now, as you can see, the, I have the rounded edges facing each other. I'm just going to peel this back. Now the rule of thumb for checking this that we are using in our industry is we take the thickness and multiply it by five. So if we take 0.7 times five, it gives us about 3.5 millimeters. So if our bead is any 3.5 or greater, we're at the proper heat range. And this one here is 4.2, so uh, the setting is good. Let's take a Another piece here, we'll do another one just to show you what it's like. This one here is 0.8 millimeters, I mean, and we have here 0.8. No, this one a little more, this is, this is one. Take it back, and this is one. So these are uh, one millimeter. So we're going to come over our machine. I look at the machine. The machine is set for mild steel. I'm going to move this all the way up to one millimeter. So again, we'll check the machine set properly. So our nugget should be about five millimeters, and this is 4.6. So what I want to do is I'm going to increase, get, take two more of them, just measure them. So I'm going to move this up to the next level, which is 1.2 millimeters. Now you notice a lot of sparks were coming out. I can eliminate that. I'll show you how I can eliminate that real quickly. But uh, we want to have a well that has produces no sparks. So we're going to uh, do another peel test here. Put our pliers on here. Pull this back. Now the beauty of these pliers, ladies and gentlemen, is that you can have these in your stall. Uh, you don't have to have a vise. Um, works really well. And this one here is now six millimeters, which is within our specifications. So we got to we got to do two good welds here. Now let me talk a little bit about. Um, protecting yourselves. You know, with uh, the Tracy decision in Texas uh, last year, um, it is important that you protect yourself and get into a habit on every vehicle that you do a, any type of structural repairs, that you're using a spot welder 
or a MIG welder, you need to do a test weld. So what you want to do is put the name of the person, and we'll call it uh, Jones, RO number, one, two, three, four, and today's date, which is 12, 13, 2019. So what I'd like to do is take a picture showing the size of it. And I'm going to follow it up with a picture of the Then I'm going to just take that and I'm going to attach it to my file. So I have a record of that I did a test weld uh, with the metal that was on the car, came out to the right th thick, at the right uh, diameter uh, tear out, and we're ready to rock and roll. And you're protected in case you had to sit there and prove that, yes, I did this uh, uh, pre-test and here's the results, I'm ready to go. Okay, this here is high strength steel. So let's measure this out. 1.4 and 1.4 millimeters. Now I'm going to show you I'm going to put a bead here. So the first thing I'm going to come over here to our welder, I'm going to move this over to uh, high strength galvanized steel. And it's 1.4, so we have 1.2, I'll go to 1.5. So I'm ready to make our weld. So this measures at five millimeters. Um, if we have 1.4 times five, it should be seven. So again, I have a little bit of a weak weld. I would move this up to the next level, which would be two, and make a test weld. I'm not gonna do it, but you get the idea of what we're supposed to do. Uh, I gave you a, an overview uh, of using the squeeze type resistant spot welders. Um, again, you're not gonna learn how to use this piece of equipment in a, you know, a short little video. It's just a quick overview as you're walking through your shop as an owner or manager to look at the vehicles. You can look at the test, how to do it, make sure we're doing that. Where do you get training? ICAR has a couple classes. They have what is known as the WCS 04, which is our squeeze type resistant spot welder theory class. And now they have a hands-on, uh, class that deals with weld bonding, uh, primers, shunt pliers, all of the stuff we talked about here, but it's a hands-on uh, experience. Uh, if you don't, don't, can't go that route, a lot of your manufacturers do have programs uh, that can, can come in and help you uh, that will teach you how to use their machine and, uh, and some of the basics of spot welding.